If your Amazon influencer commissions have gone down recently, then you're probably doing it wrong. Hey guys, my name is Jeremy, and today I want to talk about the drop in commissions I'm hearing a lot of other influencers talking about, uh, which I am not experiencing. I've been holding steady uh, at a certain level, and I have a feeling I might know why. Now, what I'm gonna share with you here towards the end of the video is not science. It's not even based on data. It's based on psychology and just my experience so far in the Amazon Influencer Program and a few of the influencers that I know and how they do things versus how I do things. Uh, so the first thing that I want to talk about is because I have to, we have to set this up. If you're gonna understand where I'm coming from on this philosophy, uh, it's going to, it's, it's gonna need to be set up. And so, what am I talking about? Don't nobody understand the words that are coming out of your mouth, man. When we look at the human psychology, I, I, I've been doing a lot of uh, uh, training with uh, Think Media, right, on making better YouTube videos, in fact, and. One of the things that that uh, Sean Cannell said is that one of the most looked up words in the dictionary, and I don't know where he pulled the data or, you know, I don't have a reference for it, but it was just something that, that stuck with me. But he said one of the most looked up words in Merriam-Webster's dictionary online recently was the word authentic. And I think that is playing into the influencer program. People... And this generation want authentic. They are looking for authenticity in every aspect of life. There is so much propaganda, so much just fakeness. You look at the media, you look at Hollywood, it's just fake. Uh, there, there's just, there's so much out there that people just crave something real. And I feel like the program has evolved, right? Originally, I believe Amazon wanted to bring in influencers who could build great content. You know, they're looking for influencers, not just average Joes off the street, but people who are engaging and compelling in how they carry themselves on camera so that when they do a review on a product, it might warrant more sales. And I think, you know, the gurus get involved and they're like, up your production level, do things other people aren't doing. Uh, because if you think about it, if the average Joe review was enough, why would the Amazon influencer program even exist? And I think about this all the time. Why would they pay Amazon influencers a commission when they already have lots, you know, in a lot of cases and probably in most cases have reviews uh, and even some video reviews from the average everyday Joe that's buying products on Amazon. And I got to thinking like, well, that's part of that's kind of scary because if, if, you know, and I think that lends to a lot of the testing we've been experiencing, the removing it from the carousels is to see are the reviews that are on this product from the people we're not paying, are those basically, are the influencers making a difference in the amount of sales? And I do believe that influencers in a way can't because I think we tend to have better quality. Uh, we know how to frame things. We typically know uh, uh, how to use lighting and stuff like that, right? So we can highlight and accentuate the product better. However, I think because of all the gurus on YouTube and everyone trying to teach you how to make more money using the Amazon influencer program, a lot has been done to essentially start pushing content that looks just like the content the manufacturer is putting on the video. Ain't nobody got time for that. If the manufacturer's content was enough, why do they need reviews, right? And so I think what a lot of, of influencers in the program are doing is overproducing the content. They're overproducing their reviews and therefore, when, when, when a buyer, because I started thinking like, if as a buyer, as someone who has done extensive research on products on Amazon, what am I looking for? You know, obviously I watch the, I watch the manufacturer's videos to see the product in motion. I see the B-roll flybys and all that. I don't need someone doing a review to show me all the B-roll. 
when the manufacturers already have it. Now, if the manufacturers don't, that might be a case to throw some of that in there to really show off the product. But I think what's happening for, for those of you who are overproducing your reviews, what's happening is they're going, that looks cool, but that looks like something that was paid for, <laughs> right? Like, how can you... How can you trust something if it was paid for? Now, obviously we know it It says under all of our videos, earns a commission, but I don't think people pay as much attention to that as the actual video. I think as a consumer, they're watching the video going either the manufacturer did that or I've already seen that. I've seen the B-roll. Like, I want to know your honest opinion. Now, since I've thrown out the word honest, I'm, I'm probably gonna offend most of you uh, because I will say this right now, whenever I see the words honest review, I throw up in my mouth a little That's offensive. Oh, it just happened right there. Uh, honest review actually makes me angry. Because as opposed to what everyone else's dishonest review, um, honest review to me screams, ah! I'm getting paid to make you watch mine because I want you to believe that I am honest and everyone else is dishonest. It's stupid. I personally, and like I said, no science to back this up. I believe in science. I would stop using honest review, period. Hard stop, full stop, just don't. It makes you seem more dishonest, quite frankly. Now, obviously you guys are still getting sales because you know people are still gonna watch, but the whole point of this video is how can we earn more? Hello, I like money. How can we do better? Because if you think about it this way, if I, and, and let me switch over here. If I am looking at this Flybird weight bench, this is my top selling product. Now. Couple things I wanna mention about this here product, you guys. I use, or have been using IPX. I'm looking at other tools because IPX seems to not be working right now. Uh, but IPX shows me, you know, the ASIN, it shows me the rating, it kinda brings all the data together when I'm doing my product research for products that I want to buy. Now, right now it says I have no video on here. I do have a video on here. It also says there's five influencer videos and it has said that since the day I thought about doing a review on it. And I actually didn't do a review on this product because I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll get around to it, but the carousel's full. Anyone, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get on a soapbox right now. Any YouTube guru that is telling you not to do a review because something says there's five influencer reviews in the top and maybe the bottom's full to move on, you need to click off their channel immediately. Unless, of course, we're talking about purchasing a product for a review. Obviously, you want to be a lot more careful if you're going to invest money into a review, but if you have it laying around the house, it should be no questions, do the review. And here's why I say that, and I say that with all the love and respect in my heart as a fellow content creator and YouTuber wanting to help people as Amazon influencers. I really say it because, you know, everyone has the best intentions, I believe. But that was horrible advice for me because I missed out on a lot of revenue. Coming into the new year, what's everyone's main focus as a New Year's resolution? It's fitness, right? So I said, screw it. I'm gonna just do the review, probably won't get on there, and quite frankly, I did the review, and it didn't get on there right away. But it's on there now. Oh, yes, and it has quickly become the highest earning product that I have. So, all that being said, for one, Here's, here's a, 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 a special tip for you. Don't trust any of the tools because it says I already made content, but it's showing my video no. Uh, this is number one in strength training and adjustable benches, you guys. This is one of the top selling weight benches. And if you simply looked at this, I mean, look at, look at the sales. January, January, Jan tons of January sales. That's why it's number one. This thing is moving units. But if I would have looked at the IPX data, Lower carousel videos, seven. 
influencer video is five, open influencer slots zero and moved on, I would have lost out on quite a bit of commission. No, don't like that. Now, here's the other thing I wanna point out. We jump into the videos here. You can see, if you scroll down here, I am right here, guys, on the top carousel. Bottom of the top carousel, but that is not necessarily a bad thing. Because I ask a qu or I, I make a statement here. This one thing could be a deal breaker. Watch before you buy. Okay? Clickbait as hell. You gotta do it. You gotta get them to click your video. Because if you look at the other ones, should you buy? Flybird adjust. Okay. I might watch that. But why if you guys are looking at this, why might I not watch this? Little hint, right? It's eight and a half minutes. Holy crap. That is a long video and there might be people who watch that. Should I buy it? That's the question. Should I buy this weight bench? They're gonna watch that whole thing through. However, and I don't want to, be, uh, this is not a dig on this influencer, but I want to share this review with you because it's eight minutes. Is it worth it? Got a big introduction, right? Today's episode, we got this cool event here, and this is what this is. It's adjustable weight bench. If you can see for the one that Cut. we saw right here from a brand called Flybird. And if you guys Cut. remember in the past, I reviewed another one from this brand. But for that Cut. one, it didn't give you guys the option to adjust the bench that pretty much allowed Cut. you guys to bring it up. That one was only Cut. one position. Where for this Cut. one here, allowed you guys to bring it up and down, which is really cool. Okay, that I think you get the point, right? Like there is a like lot of, there's a lot of cuts, and there's just a ton of editing that went into this. It's not the easiest thing to understand. He's talking quickly and it's eight minutes of that. So the retention on this video might, I, I would actually be curious to see the retention. But here's another thing that I'm noticing on several of the different thumbnails. I was looking over different products and different thumbnails um, as I was, you know, kind of researching and re getting ready for this video. But if you look here on the thumbnail, now obviously he's got a good title here, but on the thumbnail, should you buy Flybird adjust? adjustable what it's stuck behind the time never ever do your text on your thumbnail to where it sits behind the timestamp otherwise it's what you're 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 cutting it off and people aren't going to be able to read it now this one elite demonstrations flybird weight bench and it's just a, a, a thumbnail of the bench gives me no reason to click on it I, I'm not it doesn't raise my curiosity because I got two manufacturer videos up here, right? So there's nothing here that makes me want to click it. Is it worth it? Okay, now we're asking a question. This is a little bit better, uh, but it's just got this red arrow. So it's still not really assembly and first impressions. So you're going to get this guys, but it's five minutes. If I'm looking to make a buying decision, I'm not looking to spend a ton of time in this price range at a minimum. Uh, this one comparison comparison the and this is the elite demonstration again so he has two videos on here both over four minutes which is right for you so comparing two weight benches and i do recommend that you do multiple videos and do a comparison if you can but then you have mine this one thing could be a deal breaker watch before you buy two minutes so if they go through and they watch even if they watch all of this and they come down here and they watch my terrible quality video. But but look at this. No cuts. This is all two minutes, one take. And it's literally me setting it up real quick, sharing what I love about it, and being done. Two minutes and six seconds. So... They're going to have gotten all of this information up here if they watch any of these, but then they're going to say, oh, I, I need to watch this one because there, there could be something wrong with this weight bench. They're going to watch mine. And when they see that I like it, that they're there, I do share a concern that I have with it, with the, with the little foot thing. It's very tiny. I can't even use it with my big feet and my long legs. Um, so I share that in there. It's a genuine review. I don't say that I'm honest. It's not an honest review, but they know because I give a negative that it is honest. I'm giving my actual thoughts on a weight bench that I've been using for, for probably six months. A weight bench that my eight-year-old grabs out of the closet, sets up himself, and starts working out after dinner. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Jesus Christ. That's 
Jason Bourne. But uh, hey, it is what it is. Um, and so they're going they're going to make the decision because this will be the last one they watch. And it's going to be the one that pushes them over the edge because they're going to either be frustrated with these ones, not getting to the information. And then they're like, okay, what is the thing I need to look out for? But all of that to say, you guys, and again, I don't mean to clown on any of the other creators. I'm sure they're making a lot of money on this thing. But the reason I bring this up is do not overproduce your videos. Oh, you know what? I did want to show you one other thing. Um, in terms of production. Elite Demonstrations does a great job, but it looks like it's from the manufacturer. It, it, it just, it, it's to me, overproduced. Um, I, I'm not gonna take that as like, a, this guy is just reviewing a something that he loves. It looks like he was either paid to make it look nice or, um, or it's something that the manufacturer themselves are, are doing. Uh, so anyhow, again, he it's a great video and everyone should watch it. But what I'm saying is that the psychology of the buyer is I want to hear from somebody just like me who is using this thing, whatever it is, every single day. I don't want them to tell me that it's honest as if everyone else is dishonest. To me, that's so disingenuous. I do not like honest review. Don't, 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 don't do it. Don't, don't do it. Uh, I'm sorry if that offends you. I'm sorry if all of your titles and all of your thumbnails say it. I think they shouldn't. I said I'm right here. You guys are talking about me like I'm not here, but I am, and I don't like what you're saying about me. <laughs> Jeremy, I don't think she was referring to you. Um, because at the end of the day, what they're gonna do is they're gonna go through all these long videos. They're gonna probably skip past the ones that look like they've been paid to say these things. Honest review. Honestly, to me, spouts, I get paid to do this. Um, and they're gonna look for the ones that give them the information they want to make the decision to buy. So after they've passed up all the other ones, they're landing on mine and making that purchase decision because I'm just a real dude giving my honest feedback and opinions on something that I truly use. So guys, I make sure in all of my videos, except for the occasional, you might see a maximum of four to five cuts in my videos and that's to remove ums. <laughs> my wife called me out the other day, was like, you're umming and uhing a lot, which is a bad habit that I have. So I might cut those out or if I say the name, like while I'm doing the review, if I say the name wrong, I don't wanna refilm the whole thing, the rest of it's good. I'll just cut the name out and you know, uh, this is the my review on this weight bench, you know, <laughs> instead of fly barred, you know, or whatever. Yeah, you know, that's just an example, but do less. You guys make it look like the regular everyday reviews that the actual buyers of the product might do. And I have a feeling you're going to get better results. Spend time crafting your title and your thumbnail. The thumbnail is nothing for me more than a screen grab. And uh, the thumbnail is, I believe important, but the title is the most important thing. It's the biggest thing that they see. Uh, you can have text on your thumbnail, but it's very hard to read, e even on a desktop. And then you shrink that down to mobile, it's even harder. So title is going to be the most important thing. And then in your review, you need to be authentic. If you are overproducing it, it's not authentic. And if you need uh, help, figuring out how to make simpler edits using Premiere Pro, then you need to go and watch this video that I did on my editing process so you can see how simple and easy this is. I hope that helped you guys. Have a great rest of your night. We'll see you in the next video.